Okay, so before we decided to implement all of this, we looked at our school ecosystem and decided that, look, these are the parties, the, the key party or key members in our school ecosystem. And what was going to be the effects on all those people and what was going to be the reaction. So we looked at pupils, they are the center of all we do, so we looked at them first. Of course, we had learned that, yes, it will improve their learning, it will improve, but we also wanted to measure the impact on them. The safety, also screen time, did they have the skills for what we needed to do and what the tools we wanted to use. Then school staff, which was very key, the previous speaker, which I'm still going to catch and latch on to later on, um, talked about how it was important for you to carry staff al along. So we considered that what will the staff need? Did they have the skills? Were they equipped for what it is, we, where we wanted to go? Then, of course, the parents and the school community. And then we also looked at our policies because if we want to change, uh, we want to integrate tech more, some of the policies had to change. So of the key things we looked at, how much of our money or budget was now going to go into technology. It had to be a conscious decision. Okay, how much are we now going to start spending um, tech-wise? Um, we had to also change our communication policy because, okay, if it was okay to just walk in to discuss some things, now we want you to send us emails uh, and all of that. So we really sat down and looked at these four key areas uh, which we drafted in our plan. So let's look at our progression. Initially, when we started with our pupils, sorry, I can't see that. So with our pupils, what we did was um, initially, now we've identified all of the things that we needed. We decided we were going to have to have extra computing classes. So we started having extra computing classes for the pupils. Then we started with something called paperless weeks. And it was one week in a whole term will be entirely paperless. Afterwards, we went to one day in a whole week. And now practically, we are at the point where every day, uh, this is how it goes. And we're now running very robust our online platform. There's now coding and robotic classes. Children are now bringing in their devices. Again, when we talked about our policies, we were spending less than 2% of our uh, budget on tech tools, tech resources, and now we decided, okay, we're going to have to ramp up, ramp that up. Right now, we currently spend about 15 to 17% of our uh, budget on tech tools because, of course, we had considered that. Uh, initially, we started out with external facilitators. Now we have full-time staff for our computing program and our robotic program. This we have to get in our policies. So our computing teachers are always full-time staff. <laughs> then we increased our training allocation. Um, so how much are we going to spend on training? This was also put in the policy. What kind of training um, they will require? What kind of training staff will require? And that was also put. Then our recruitment, so this is where we're going. We already had a plan. Of course, we had to recruit the kinds of teachers that we wanted that could deliver. So we started to change gradually our, our recruitment. And looking, not only was experience, OK, some sort of experience with technology was important. In the early days, we started out with um, the staff just training on the job. And the reason we're trying to create their own into videos that such when the children are like in year five, children can put together simple videos or they can convert their PowerPoint to videos. So students that were centered um, created media was key. Then virtual treats in our learning. So we teach the children about various places. Um, now we use the virtual learning, virtual reality to also enhance the way that the learning is, is going. So I talked to the children about Olumoro coming out. Really, really want to take all the children to Olumoro, but think about the logistics of always doing that. So the virtual reality helped us, and then also augmented reality, which we use. Um, again, small steps, because when they're saying this, some people are like, you see why I'm, I don't like this tech conversation. Uh, this thing that you say is not for me. But it's small steps. And every time it was when we got to a point and there was a need, and then we thought, okay, what, how is tech going to help us to see this means that's what we did. 
We then have STEM and tech weeks of tech challenges where the students have to participate. Also, the teachers is important. In school administration, um, small steps were attendance, so it was easy. That's very important. Okay, so data collection and analysis. Um, very important. I don't know how we could have done it any other way before tech. When parents come in, prospective parents, we capture their information digitally and immediately he sends them like an email. So it's not someone sitting back now having to now type this email, it's already been factored in. So immediately they are working out, they're receiving the email from us, and it looks like, oh, they're magicians. No, it's all tech helping us to set all of that. And then we started to collect our data, we were able to tell who enrolled, how many people enrolled after working in, what did we do, what did we miss. Of course, for existing parents, um, data collection, we always do that. So we have a system where we can track it, the parents, how they attend school events, how many of them come to the open days, how many of them attend the parent education program. Um, sometimes even the newsletters, how many people open the newsletters that you said. So when we sit down, we say to ourselves that, look, this communication thing really hit home because you know, only 20% of people who open the newsletters, um, those were on the one of the ways. Then of course our resource assets and um, only allocation and management, we know where each resource is at every given time. The part that a lot of school leaders like is billing, um, of course it's money. So we're able to know with our bills, it's done, it's generated electronically, it's sent to the parents, and we can tell the parents who have opened the email. So sometimes when the parents is saying, we send it, I didn't get it. We are able to tell, no, ma, you opened it on so-so and so day. Uh, so we are able to tell that. Then performance tracking. So performance tracking. We are able to track all our pupils' performance. Um, and first we started our real, really small steps, like I said. First of all, we collected um, the data for the children, how many people hit like our um, levels that we wanted them to eat. Now we have it's a very robust system where we can track what the child's score was like in maths from uh, year one all the way to year six. Is this child play to? What are we doing? Have we really impacted um, their performance? So we're able to get that information. Then attendance. The small step we made again um, for attendance, we made that also electronic. It's even faster because I've got 30 minutes left. So attendance, the, um, we're able to track the children's attendance, and all this is easy to do. Like when I arrive at work, I'm able to say who is absent by 9 o'clock, I'll be able to tell who is absent. I don't need anyone coming to provide me that additional information. I can see how many times a child leaves school. I don't wait till the end of the week or the end of the time somewhere to know that a child has leaves school more than the, the normal time that the child should, should be in school. Then scheduling and um, calendars. We also schedule all of those electronic, so our schedule you know how it is when some people are told that they have a meeting and we have, they say they missed it. Well, Google, we use Google Calendar for that. It's able to notify you and notify you and notify you to the point where you can't say that you missed those meetings. Then for parent communication, gradually we went from the communication books saying to the parents, okay, now we want you to get the information anytime. We want you to be able to respond anytime. So parents are able to send us their, uh, their food. They're able to receive the email and send email back almost instantaneously. Sometimes in the email that they have links where they can schedule meetings with their children's teachers uh, if need be. Assessment. So as I mentioned, we went on to do the CBT, computer-based testing assessment, which we started in 2014. It's helped us to really stay on track. And I also want to mention, because the cost is at the back of 
a lot of a lot of school leaders' minds, and I'm happy that she, the previous speaker, talked about us. For us, uh, I must mention that we are a growing school. <laughs> we don't really have deep pockets. So most of our resources are really low-cost resources that we have just put together because we understand that this, this is what we have to do and this helps us tremendously. So the CBT assessment, I can track. If we don't wait till the end of the exam before teachers um, start scoring, then we're able to generate academic and non-academic report. The first speaker talked about how I don't have to wait till the end of the term to be receiving a report about how my child has performed. So the technology in that way, the system we have has helped us to be able to track those things as much we can. We even track how many times the child went to the library. Um, if the child submitted all their homework. So parents are intrigued when they re receive this report from us. They help doing really well. It's so easy because they're just computing um, a series of people. So the, the parents sort of like move and has an idea about their child's progress even before we get to the very end. Now, what have been the impact for us? We have we saved a lot of money, to be honest. We saved a lot of money, saved money on paper, um, non-essential stuff. So there's some stuff that you don't really, really need anymore. Our technology has helped us. I'm sure the school leaders will like to hear that. And also, we are able to do more with less resources because we're staying on track with our data gathering and our data analysis. We're able to stay on top of our of our SWOT. And so we're ensuring the resources are going to the right place. There's no reason deploying more resources into maths when the data is showing you that um, English is where children require a lot of work. So we want to spend more money on our tech tool, and that's helped us to, to get it right. We've also eliminated decision fatigue and decision lag, the time it will take to my money. Um, assess and collate all of that data before we then put it together. Now, technology in the classroom has been fantastic and amazing. Um, it has improved tremendously the children's confidence, children's creativity, um, because it's driving more and more for, for more student-centered learning, so students are taking charge of their learning, you can see how confident they really are uh, about it. Plus, um, we've had access to global knowledge, um, so we're able to have teachers from anywhere in the world be in our classroom. We've had collaborations with teachers in the US, collaborations with teachers from anywhere, industry experts. I remember when we had the author for How to Train Your Dragon, the children, they spoke about it for months. And also when we hooked up to the, it was the International Space Station, the children did not stop talking about that. So, and this was the access that technology has given us to collaborations, and because there are tons and tons of resources. The previous speaker talk, talked about all of the resources, really uh, cheap resources, some free, but I like that she mentioned that if you want to go a certain level, then you need to be ready to pay for some of the access. And of course, we we're ready for the lockdown, so immediately, the lockdown happened, all we just said to the team is, okay, let's just take a few minutes, a few, a few weeks, or a week, few days, rather. Curate your resources, and let's be ready. So in about a week, we were back up delivering our lessons like we never, uh, we never left. Okay, so it's time to roll the boat. I just put this, I'm, I'm a school director, so I have to use something from school. Get off now, and get into the boat, you can roll the boat. So, um, she said it at first, and I'm going to reiterate again, start from wherever you are. A question from the, um, one of the platforms. It says, teachers do their best. How do we make parents get involved in the technological change as most parents within our domain are not exposed technologically and not willing to flow? Okay, so I'm just going to be speaking from our own experience because that's a 
Now, what, what we did was, like I mentioned, we focused on the children first. And we got the children body, and the parents will see what could be done. So we also had the parents' education program. So for a while, our parents' education program was, this is the skill. This is the, this is the vital skill for the 21st century. Your child must get on with this skill. I understand that we're all in different demographics. Some of us may find it a little bit easier than others. But I remember a few parents who say, well, this is all there's D, what's all this? I mean, way back, oh, this is D, we're not interested. I don't know what that is in English, but I remember my parents saying that, saying that to me several times. So what we did was the children. They could see what their children could do. We had several showcases. I mean, that's one of the ways we had their buy They were the last people we just jumped in. We just need to get on with it. That's not what we did. So we used the students, we skilled them up. They had those extra classes. We had showcase. We had these things. Then at every parent education program, we kept on saying that. So every time they came, we showed them the things that the children had done. Oh, you mean? I mean, no parent wanted their child to now be left behind. So that's how we do it. You will still get that complaint. I think parents will always give that complaint of um, there was no data or there was no this. I couldn't get this. But if you have that large majority and start with the students, I mean, the, you can't come to me to sell to me what I what I can't really see. I can't I can't envision. So that was how we went about about uh, marketing to the point where we don't still have hundred percent, uh, but I mean we have very good numbers. Thank you very much. Thank you.